I'm Siley, and we're discussing top test preps tips for attacking the math sections of the ISEE. The two sections are math achievement and quantitative reasoning, sections two and four, respectively. But I'm grouping them together because, hey, they're math. So the goal of these two sections is to find the correct answer. And what's great about math is that you can see that there's clearly one answer that will fit in the problem. So here, the most important strategy is called UNWRAP. This is a top test prep strategy, and it's an acronym. It stands for, the UN is to underline the prompt. You have to know what you're looking for and what the question is asking you to find. Second is, write out the equations. Here, if the question asks you about mean, for example, you might want to write out mean equals all the numbers added together divided by the number of numbers. Third is assemble. Assemble the equations. This is especially helpful in a multi-step problem. Say you have to find the probability of something and also multiply. Well, which comes first? Assembling will help you put the equations in order. And finally, plug in and solve. At the end of the question, the test might give you that, well, x equals 6, and you have to plug it in, and then you'll get whatever answer that they're looking for. Now, these steps, with practice, you know, will be second nature to you. Writing out the equations and assembling can be combined, and with enough practice, you might not even have to write out all of the equations. You might just remember them. So here, underlining the prompt. I know it sounds simple, but it can really be a key to your success. Let me give you an example. Here we have a problem. 5 plus n equals 8. And the question is, what is 2n? So you might say to yourself, wow, this is easy. I just solve it and I find that n equals 3. I'm done. But wait, what was the question asking? It was asking, what is 2n? 2n is actually 6. And 3 will also be an answer choice uh, for that question. They're just trying to trip you up again. So make sure you don't let that happen to you. All right, let's talk about the word problems on the quantitative reasoning section. So there are a couple of tips for the word problems. One is don't get distracted by the extraneous information they give you. It's just there to trick you. And my second bit of advice is to be aware of your units, all right? If you see a problem where the units, like say the length and width of a room, are given in feet, but all the answer choices are in yards squared, you must convert. Okay? The units are going to be very useful for you on the test, and especially in the comparison section. There the strategy is to solve each, columns, uh, each column, and then decide whether one quantity is greater or smaller, or if they're equal or if you can't determine the information, whatever it may be. But remember, the units are super important, so you have to be able to convert. Knowing simple things like there are 36 inches in a yard and there are four quarts in a gallon will really help you out in this section. And the last thing is for the entire math section, always, always, always remember to simplify. If you solve a problem and you find that x equals 2 fourths, will you see 2 fourths as an answer? Never, because it can be simplified to 1 half. So definitely remember that in all of the math sections you do on this test.